Metagrid, how I love thee. It helps so much uh, with Cubase. It also works with DP and some other DAWs. If you have a spare or even not spare, if you have an iPad, it's totally worth putting it on there and kind of focusing like your key things that maybe you don't really remember or there's lots of options to them. You can put them in the Metagrid, tap a couple of buttons on your tablet, and you're off to the races. So for this episode, I'm just going to do an overview of my major screens and kind of things that I use, things that I don't use anymore, and general ideas of how Metagrid works. In the next episode, we'll look at specific instances within Cubase and especially how I do a lot of my MIDI and continuous controller data editing with Metagrid. This is the first page that I set up when I was working on Metagrid, geekily giggling to myself at night with my laptop and my iPad. Most of these commands, if not all of them, I believe, are default commands tied into Metagrid already. Uh, the power of this app is that not only can you use any of the default commands in Cubase or the other DAWs that it supports, you can tie in macros, logical editor commands, and pretty much anything else that you want to do. You can make a button for it, which is one of the reasons that it's so powerful. So a lot of the way that this works, if I tap the edit button and go in, let's say, to this marker command, you can see under action queue to marker one, that's the action. And I just tapped that right there. And if I drill down further, you can see all of the Cubase categories that it already covers. So, so much stuff. These are already built in, and you don't have to do a thing to use them. I'm going to close that back out. So the first page, really, the only ones that I end up using a lot are these three down in the right corner, these three guys. Select unused sound bites and move to the trash. Empty the trash and create a new project. Super easy things when I have the pool window open, I can literally just go boom, 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 and I'm good to go. I also, a lot of times, use the remove fades just because I forget what the key command is. Now that's the key, I think, with Metagrid, you can put an infinite number of pages and like every command in the world, but you'd spend more time scrolling through these different pages trying to figure out where your commands were than you would if you actually just executed the command maybe with a key switch on your keyboard. So what I'm in the middle of doing is actually kind of like my template, getting rid of a bunch of the stuff that I don't use within Metagrid. I use a lot of these commands in Cubase, but I've got shortcuts. I've got key commands to them that I've already plugged into Cubase, and my brain knows what they are, like these guys right here, those three. I, I know what those are it, on my keyboard, and it's faster for me to access it that way. When Metagrid really becomes powerful is when you start doing things more like this with MIDI editing. But let's go back to the general page. All of these up here are just adding tracks, a stereo track, a MIDI track, an instrument track, adding groups or faders, adding rulers or markers. Uh, this is adding a marker. This is going to a marker. Um, effects bypass. I mean, I'm not going to read all of the tiles out to you, but it is super, super helpful. And I do use this one quite a bit. These are sound bites moving to the front and moving to the back when sound bites are stacked up on top of each other. And sometimes I don't remember what these are, so it's nice to have those mix console windows. But really, a lot of these commands I still use, just not with Metagrid specifically. Kind of the same thing here. Any commands on this page that I do use, I actually have them as redundant tiles on another page within Metagrid, except for the takes. This is really, really helpful for me, because if I have like a drum recording I'm doing of a drum kit with 12 mics, and they're all grouped together in one folder, I can just hit next, boom, and it moves down to the next take. Or duplicate, it, it treats everything the same way. Delete inactive, whatever take is not selected, it'll delete everything else. It's just a really nice, quick way to be able to run through your takes without having to click on the menu, choose the command, scroll down with your mouse, and select it. Some of these things are very self-explanatory. The grid, these three things I use a lot. The zoom controls I use a lot, but again, with key commands, not with Metagrid itself. 
Uh, this is just transposing an octave up and down or a half step up and down. I use that a lot. Sometimes with Metagrid, sometimes just in Cubase because it's such an easy shortcut. But there are some really nice things like showing you use controllers, the key editor, uh, selecting controllers automatically. These are actually uh, velocity up and down and selected controller up and down by 10%, I think. But again, these first two pages, not really what I use the most. This is my port of call. First place I go whenever I'm doing anything, mostly because it's all about massaging and editing MIDI CC data. I'm pretty sure, I'm not exactly sure, but I'm pretty sure that most of these are logical editor commands, meaning that little kind of scary window in Cubase that can be very intimidating because it's not really straightforward, but it is amazingly powerful. This is basically a view. I can view CC1, CC2, CC7, or CC11. Those are my four major controllers that I work with. They're also the four faders of the eight on the far left of my keyboard. So I have them defaulted. It's basically modulation, breath, volume, and expression. So I can view them with the gray buttons. I can obviously select them, copy them, or delete them with the red buttons. And this works within any range. So if I'm in a range, I literally just do this, and it's going to delete all of the CC2 data for me. Or I can hit this button. It's going to delete all the CC data, no matter what it is, after the cursor. I use that all the time, especially when I'm moving maybe from a brass track to a string track, and I don't want to have the same volume and expression data, because I want to use the previous volume and expression data, bam, all gone. And this is also a really nice button. I'm going to have probably four versions of these. If I tap that, whatever note is selected, it'll insert, I believe it's just 1, 7, and 11 at predetermined values. So for 1, it's 0, and for 7 and 11, it's 100. So literally, you just select the first note, Tap that button and boom, the controllers pop in there automatically for you. This is also a super, super, super powerful section. If I have, let's say, my strings respond to volume on CC11 and CC1 is going from non-vibrato to vibrato, but my brass responds to volume on CC1 because there is no vibrato. If I want to have the same swell, I can copy from the strings to the brass and literally just say this. And it's going to take all the CC11 data, cut it, and paste it to CC1. And I'll give a demonstration of all this once we're in Cubase. Um, there's all kinds of great things you can do. Same thing with, I do a lot of crescendos and swells. so. Uh, just modifying the data, ramping it up or down by a certain percentage, and then this is velocities, modifying velocities up or down by a certain percentage. And then here I can modify the CC data 10% higher or just 10 higher, or 10% or 10 increments lower, and this is plus or minus 5 on the velocities themselves. These two buttons right here I use a ridiculous amount of time. It just scoots it something like it's not even a 16th note, it's like 40 ticks or something like that. So whatever I have selected, I can just sit here and scoot by 40 ticks until it lines up to where I want, and then this is um, 16th notes. So if it's really far off, I can say, okay, back two more 16ths, and right there, and it lines up exactly where I would like. Those are my lovely transpose buttons again. These I'm going to get rid of. This originally pulled up my different mixer layouts on Mixer 3, which shows up on my left-hand screen. Um, these are still important, and I use them, but this is no longer here, so I just need to update it to the six Mixer layouts that I'm using now. And it's really nice, because again, it'll just pull it up automatically for you. This is another one that I use all the time, and these are all logical editor commands. Don't worry, I'm going to have the Metagrid file just the way you see it now, plus my Cubase key commands, my logical editor presets, my macros, everything's going to be available for you to download and check it out. One important thing to know is you need to have all of those things in order for all of the commands in Metagrid to work. The ones that are defaulted to Cubase, like the first one that I pulled up, that'll work no matter what. But the logical editor commands, the macros, the kind of more specific, like really geeky things that I program myself, you're going to need the Cubase-specific XML file that points to those Metagrid commands, plus the folder that has all of my 
all of my uh, JGM Cubase logical editor presets and macros. But all that's going to be up on Patreon. It's going to be a little weedy to kind of get it all installed the correct way. So what I'll probably do before I get too far into many more episodes is explain how to implement all that into Cubase. But that's going to be in a separate video. This is the most recent page that I only built maybe two or three months ago. And I tried to pick icons that made sense to me and hopefully to you as well. So if you have multiple voices playing at the same time, the green will select the highest, high, low, or lowest voice out of four, up to four. If you only have three, then it's just these three. If you only have two, it's just these two. And the red will delete that same thing. So if you're looking at a four voice chord and you hit this button, it's going to delete the second to the highest voice. Really, really great when you're taking something maybe from strings and you want some of that MIDI data in the French horns, but not all of it. You can edit it super fast and not have to go and click around and command drag to select things. And all of these just select beats. So quarter note down beats, quarter note off beats, beat one, two, three, and four, off beat eighths, and off beat sixteenths. Again, if you're doing digga 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 that sort of a thing with strings or percussion, it's super helpful to be able to just grab these things really quick and adjust the velocities and then move on. Speaking of adjusting velocities, that's what these next two columns are. So I could choose beat one, set the velocity to 80, choose offbeat eighths, set the velocity to 110. Makes it really, really quick to modify your notes and velocities or even if you just select the beats, your pitch with specific notes without having to click and drag. I swear, I used to spend half my time clicking and dragging trying to pick like the downbeat of each bar for 16 bars. And then I'd accidentally click somewhere else and I'd have to start over. We've all been there. There's no shame in it. And this simply selects the velocities within the given tile. So that'll be any velocities between 100 and 110. And a lot of times I use this if I'm trying to smooth out velocities. And a couple are just a little too low and I want to pull them up, but I don't want to have to pick each one individually. This is anything less than 100 and this is anything more than 100. This is actually the same thing as, I think the colors are off, but these guys are velocity ramps the same way these guys are velocity ramps. And these are all beautiful, just self-evident commands. With Look at all the wonderful space left for me to add more commands. The last two pages, also really important, these are my visibility pages. So you notice these columns are duplicated in twos. And the idea is that the red column, anything that you see that's red, it, see it says solo at the top. It'll only pull up just Hans Zimmer drums, or just the Albion woodwinds, where it says toggle, meaning if I have my template up and everything's there, but I want to see um, the keys and the harp, and they're not there, it'll toggle them on and off within the view. And everything else around here is really redundant tiles from other pages. So if I am sitting here on this page, and I'm pulling something up, then I can quickly do some other commands that are common. And as the little keyboard says down here, this is sort of the synth visibility. This is the, this is the orchestra visibility. So with synths, it's the same thing. You can turn them all on or off, or specifically. And the same thing with the orchestra. So this would be all of the brass. So I would just see brass or I could just see Albion, or just see synth samples, or whatever. And the same thing applies here. If I want to see all the synths, or if I just want to see native instruments, or if I want to see only all of my contact JGM01 slave things, pretty straightforward, I think. So just a quick overview, but I encourage you to go to Metagrid's website. The link will be in the description. They've got tutorials and videos and a really good user manual that explains how everything works. Uh, if you're interested, grab all the files off my Patreon site. See if you can MacGyver it in there on your own. And if there are lots of problems, I can do a specific video, even with screenshots that show how it works and how you would implement my files into your Cubase session.